So if you are wanting to stop a habit of like gambling or whatever like that, you're going to set a boundary with your friends and say, no, I have a rule. I don't go out after 10 o'clock during the week, the work week, or it's about drinking or not want to feel so bad the next day. And you just say, no, I don't have late night uh, midweek or during the week, just setting these boundaries and just staying firm with them. Because sometimes we can become very porous with our boundaries too. Sometimes someone say, oh, come on, it's just this one night. Yeah. It's not going to do you any harm. And then if you cave and you give in, then that's, you're not setting up your own boundary. You're not even sticking to your own boundary for yourself. So why should you expect other people to respect your boundaries if they see that you're going to be lenient and bend on your own rules around yourself? So I think when you can set boundaries and be very clear and communicate them with others, and stick with them, then people will respect that. And if they don't, then they're not your friend. And you have to say, you have to call it out and just say, every time I say not to call me after 10 o'clock at night or not to make me feel so guilty about not showing up today, this makes me feel disappointed in this relationship. What is your, what way are you thinking behind this when you're saying these things to me? And just call it out and, and have this conversation that, might need to be addressed and you may be looking at it in a different way to your friend they might be saying I didn't look at it this way or now that you have expressed this to me I can see your point on this and it might be okay it might be an amical change and if it's not then you know where you stand with that friend when they're not somebody that you can rely on that will stick to your boundaries with you one of the best ways I've found to handle future behavior is to deal with it in advance. So you make contingency plans. Let's say you're at a restaurant with Tony and you're having a really healthy meal. And at the end, Tony says, let's get that pie. You can be so shocked that you don't know how to handle the pie thing. But if you figure it out, in a, if Tony says, let's get that pie, which he likes to do, what am I going to say? Tony, that doesn't work for me today. Or I've reached my limit. Or you go ahead if you want, but... So you game out these things and now you maybe visualize them in your head as you're driving to the restaurant. Then when Tony does say, let's have that pie, you've got some ready phrases ready to go. And it's not the first time you've ever said it to Tony. So it flows a lot better. Yeah, I love that, Bill. Uh, I really do believe in about rehearsing things and practicing things in your head. Mm -hmm. If you feel that there's going to be a difficult situation coming up or something that's going to be tempting, definitely rehearsing it in your mind, how you want it to what the outcome you want, what the results you'd like at the end of the night and think of it ahead of time to say, if they want to go on and go to another bar after the restaurant, what am I prepared to say? What am I going to say to, to express how I feel? Be clear right up front or even before you go to the restaurant, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to have an early night after dinner. So I won't be going anywhere after the restaurant tonight. Yeah. And, but I'm so looking forward to hanging out with you guys today, tonight at the sure. meal. And be very upfront. I think being very assertive like that, I think you are it look like in control and well, you are in control. You feel more in control, you feel more assertive and you don't get railroaded or hijacked later on in the evening. And where you feel like, oh, now I look like I'm making an excuse. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. And you feel <laughs> awkward and then you bow out and not say anything at all. And then you're doing something that you don't want to do. You're eating something you don't want to eat. You're drinking too much, whatever the habit is. Um, yeah, I think rehearsing and practicing it in your mind, visualizing how it looks like the way it's going to go in the evening and what kind of answers you're going to come up with. How do you go to the next step, the next level of actually cutting someone off, right? It's like, hey, you're my friend. There's some behaviors that we diverge on. I don't want to be a part of that. And if you want to go be part of that, go be part of it. But there are other times where you just say, this is just not working out. And this person is sucking up the energy and kind of the motivation for me to do good things and holding me back. How do you do the actual cutoff? And I think what you, one thing you mentioned, which was very interesting, is you were talking about other friends calling people out. I think a lot of our significant others are really good at this, right? I've had my wife will be like, this person you're hanging out with is not really your friend and you think they are. And they'll call that out. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, we have lots of fun. Like, yeah, but sucking up your time, you leave with a weird negativity and a bad attitude about things. It's like, you're not you. And that's going to run. And they're really worried because they can see that happening. It's like probably people we should pay attention to, right? Who are, who could tell us, to be honest. 
but have you guys ever had to coach people to just cut off friendships that aren't really friendships and how'd that go? Yes, I've been in that situation myself where I've had to cut off friendships because they were toxic. They were just not working for me. And it is hard. I have to say it does. It's quite difficult to keep it calm. And But it, the way to do it is to stay calm, is to go in there with the rehearsal, with what you want to say and have the idea of if they say this, what is my answer to that? Have it look at it from their point of view before you go into it and say, what is the backlash? What are they going to be angry with me about? What are they going to bring up? And try to keep yourself, have that self-regulation of staying calm in a moment because getting aggressive or getting angry, getting explosive, it's just going to put the other person on a defensive mechanism. They're going to be ready to attack you. It's just going to escalate. It's going to get ugly. And when you are expressing that this isn't working for you and they will get angry, they will get upset because nobody likes rejection. Everybody's terrified of rejection and it's painful. It's going to be painful for that person. But have some compassion for that. Don't get angry. Understand where they're coming from. Understand that this is hurtful. And you don't want to hurt them per se. You just want to cut the ties. But say, I understand that this is, this is not something that you're expecting me to say. I'm not here to hurt your feelings. This is just how I feel. And I'm ready to move on. And I really wish you the best of luck in your future. And I mean no harm by being honest with you. I think you deserve my honesty in this situation. And if they do just keep escalating, you have to just try to have that self-regulation of being calm and be a good listener. Let them say what they want to say. And they'll feel heard by you. They'll feel that you're understanding their side of it just by listening, just having those pauses, not jumping in, not jumping in to attack them and dispute what they're saying. This is something that you're not willing to pursue with them. So you're not going to have to really try to defend yourself to a great extent because you know you're not going to, you're just ending it. So allow them to express their anger, allow them to express their feelings, be a listener and say, I hear what you're saying. I can understand. I can hear you're angry with me. That makes sense. And I'm not here to hurt you. And just stay very calm. But being a good listener in those situations is really crucial because you're coming out on top. You are staying in control of your emotions. And by you being calm and being supportive in a sense, you're bringing that level of escalation back down. And they start to calm down and start to see that you're not there to attack them. You're not there to have a fight. You're there to be honest and clear with your decision. And I think that's really crucial in communicating yeah i love the honesty makes... part that you said you just being really honest honest with yourself and honest with them and providing a positive or an alternative a positive alternative to to further the friendship and offering them a way to maybe align with you so that they can be a part of the positive change or the positive journey or the reducing the negativity allowing them to have that option as well but the brutal honesty with yourself and then with them is just really respectful to everybody involved yeah and i'm so sorry i have to pop off a few minutes earlier i have a prior engagement it's been wonderful seeing you Thanks. all i can't wait for another one when Thanks, you get more of these <laughs> it's really laurel. positive and engaging thank you absolutely yeah. Thanks, laurel. And just to piggyback off of that honesty thing, yeah, I think that it's extremely important at all levels of this because conceivably it's possible that having this conversation with somebody, you could be, they could be feeling similarly. Like you could be yes. almost dragging them down in some ways because you guys have, especially with old friends, I feel like you have years of this established rapport and habits and routines and things that you do together. Maybe they're, saying to themselves, man, I really wish we weren't going to the bar like this, or I really wish we weren't eating in this way, whatever it is. But neither of you were honest with each other to bring it up. So you could just be proliferating that and keeping that wheel turning for years and years before someone actually says something. So you could find, if honesty is your policy, that, oh, actually, we are in alignment still. We both have been bringing each other down. Yeah, you could actually find a solution. Yeah. 
you could actually find a solution to this. You might say, how can we find a compromise going forward? I'm not a heavy drinker and I you know you like to go out and party or whatever it is, but you might say, where else could we socialize together that it's not heavy drinking? Because right. I do enjoy parts of our relationship, our friendship, but uh, this other part is really getting me down and I just, exactly. it's not healthy for me and I need to set that boundary and I need to be clear that I'm not doing this that anymore. Makes- I think so. I think if you're, especially if you're relating it to your health, possibly if that's the issue and the behavior, the specific behavior that you're targeting, it's going to be a lot easier to digest on the other side. And if they are truly your friend, what friend is going to say, no, I I refuse to help you not do this heavy drinking, or I refuse Mm -hmm. to help you eat better or move more. If they are saying that, then you, they just reaffirmed or they just confirmed what you're, uh, why you're having this conversation in the first place. So I think. Yeah. And that, you will find good. friends. Yeah. You will find friends that won't, that do want to party and they'll just say, oh, you're being sure. dull and boring. And, and you go, okay, we're just at different levels in our stages of life right now. So good luck with you and enjoy partying. Just that's the end of it. 